Hey, uh, please hold. Hey, uh, please, uh, can you please hold? I'll call you back. Sorry, I'm getting a lot of, uh, uh thanks. Hey. Hey! Please hold. Sorry, please, bear with me one second. Just put your hold for one minute. Hey, uh, Mary, could you, uh, could you hold all my calls, please? Thanks. A lot of people have been asking me questions about the music video I directed for Lemon Demon's Touchtone Telephone. I'm really happy with the response it's got so far, so thanks to everyone who's watched it or shared it or talked about it. But I thought I would uh, answer some of the questions I've been getting um, and hopefully tell you a bit about how we made the video. So, uh... Mary, send him through. Put it down wrong. It's a good opening question. Um, I became a fan of Neil in probably like 2006. It was sort of like around Ultimate Showdown time. The first Lemon Demon song I saw was Ebom's World Sucks. Ebom's World.com Sucks or something like that. Yeah, ever since then, I think View Monster was the first album that I was around when it was released. So it was really exciting when Spirit Phone finally came out after like eight years of nothing. And I started thinking about making a music video for Touchstone Telephone a few months after Spirit Phone came out. I just had these like um, ideas in my head when I listened to the song. My original concept for the video back in like 2016 was actually really different from what we ended up making. Originally there would have been a conspiracy theorist uh, actually going to a government lab and he was gonna uh, try and hack into it and then he was gonna go to a science expo and try and show off his his touchstone telephone that could contact the dead and I kind of tried to make it in 2016 but we couldn't get a location to film it in and I kind of went off it but it's a good thing I didn't make it then because it wouldn't have been as good because I wasn't as experienced with filmmaking back then and it wasn't until 2020 that I um, started developing it a bit more uh, working with Henry who is behind this camera right now and we went through my concepts and uh, expanded them a bit. We started turning it into something that was really, really narrative. There was like a whole backstory of the guy in the video and like he had like a dad who died and he was gonna like avenge him or something, but it, um, we really liked that concept, but it started getting like crazy complicated to the point that we couldn't figure out how to cram it into a music video. And then at some point I saw the music video for um, Jesse Ware's song step into my life and I really like that and I said what if the guy just dances <laughs> and so we just decided to do that instead that was pretty much what inspired the video uh, well as I said it took years to kind of plan the video because I kept coming back to it and it was sort of in the back of my mind once we got that idea of uh, doing it in sort of a dance way things moved very quickly because we had that conversation I think it was I think it was about the 10th of October. I thought it would be really cool if we could get this music video out in time for Halloween because spirit phone, sort of paranormal, supernatural themes. So the actual process of taking the video from just an idea to having it uploaded on the internet was two or three weeks. We had to work out where we were gonna film it, how we were gonna film it, who we were gonna film, who we were gonna film it with. <laughs> Um, there weren't storyboards, um, but in lieu of that, I made a previs, which basically just means a crap version of the video. And I did that using the simplest tool I had available to me, which was Gary's Mod. Check this out. It looks really dumb um, and I always felt kind of awkward showing it to people but this is like the version of the video that I could show to people and say this is what we're making. And I found that really useful because otherwise it's quite hard to describe the real intricacies of what we were making. Like I'd have to like say exactly what's happening at each point in the song. 
So that was just the way that I did it. And in terms of what was ad-libbed, uh, there was nothing. Nothing. We had a full shot list that we went through shot by shot and stuck to because everything that happens in the video has to be synced to a specific point in the music. So we couldn't really change stuff during the production. I was really concerned about making sure that the video would still work when we came to put all the shots together in the edit. So one thing that we did was that we had our editor on set. As we filmed the video throughout the day, he literally took each clip that we shot and put it into the timeline and edited it as we went. So that meant that throughout the shoot, we always knew that the shots we had were working and that we weren't going to have any problems later on, that we'd realise uh, we'd missed something or that something didn't quite cut together well. There was one instance where we actually found a problem with one of the shots that we did. Uh, it was a shot where Tom stands up from the desk and then in the next shot he was just standing completely still. The editor found that when he cut those shots together, it looked weird. It just looked strange to have him exiting the frame and then just standing there in the next shot. So we actually made room in the schedule to reshoot that shot with Tom stepping into that frame instead of just already being there. It's just little things like that that we would have missed if we hadn't been editing it as we went along. So that was really great. I don't know. Luckily, uh, I knew someone who does know things about dance and uh, I used the Step Into My Life video as an example and said, I kind of want to do something like this. Please, can you help me? Please God, I don't know what I'm doing. And uh, she figured out all of the choreography. Well, I forgot to mention this before, but it took four days to film this thing. A lot of the shots just needed to be just right and took quite a few takes to get there. So with that shot, on our first day of filming, we shot Tom against the wall, doing what he's doing on the projector. We took that home, we graded it, and then we played it through the projector the next day with Tom standing in front of it. But the way that the music synced up is that um, when we were filming the video, we had playback, we had the music playing out, and in that case, the music was playing from the video that was on the projector screen. Good question. Um, I didn't do it. Um, I had my... Uh, special effects wizard do it, uh, Henry, who is behind this camera over here. Oh. And uh, it was pretty easy, right? No! Here's something annoying. If you look at the shot where it's a flat shot of Tom going all the way back into the audience, it almost looks like we just copy and pasted Tom a load of times on the screen. But we didn't. We had Tom sit in every seat individually with a green screen behind him. And then Henry spent ages comping them together and we ended up with a shot of loads of Toms. We did not do it the lazy way. We did it in a very labor intensive way. How many hours do you think it took? To many hours. It was every night after the shoot, I'd get back, everyone, everyone would have an okay time and I wouldn't. Was it worth it? Leave a comment and let us know. I don't know, it was like a few hours. It's like uh, five quid or something. No. I don't know. I don't really know how to answer that. Um, it's just a jacket and stuff. I mean, you see it in the video. Um, <laughs> we, um, we, uh, that's cool. This is a string. Oh, okay. I'll cut down longer. 
the most challenging aspect really would be just like making everything come together in time. Like there was a point at which we didn't have a location and I didn't know how we were. I'm going to start that again. Let's go. The producer took care of that. We were quite lucky to be filming in a point when the coronavirus in the UK had kind of like, the first wave had ended and the second wave hadn't started yet. Everyone had masks on set. There was a limit to how many people could go in certain rooms in the venue because they were smaller and less well ventilated. We had hand sanitizer and all that, so we took all the precautions that we could. Well, because a lot of the video was shot in like quite dark environments, we used the all singing, all dancing Sony A7S III, which has awesome low light performance. So we used that and we used it on a, most of the video was shot on a Freefly Mobi M5. Henry was running about like this. Um, we also had a wireless follow focus kit. So that could be focused while Henry was running about like this. Um, and we had the video from the camera wirelessly feeding to a monitor so that the focus puller and myself could see it. And we also had, uh, we had a, a gaffer who had a lot of his own lights. There were some really complex lighting things and uh, the video wouldn't have worked without them. Maybe. I think everyone has seen Cory the Armadillo at this point. There's been lots of comments about it, but um, there are a few other things, but who knows how many. Yes! That is a font uh, which was made by a Tumblr user called Summer Crane, just based on the font that's used on the album cover, obviously. My favorite part of making it was the final day of shooting because that's when we did um, the two dance sequences and that was really great because we had a um, choreographer was on set. We had a lot of people on set that day and we had kind of got into a rhythm of things by that point. So everything was working really smoothly and also those scenes were just really fun and really great to see them coming together. Not really. Um, I like Book of Mormon. I think I'd definitely say hamburger. Hot dog is the correct answer here. Um, this many. Um, Okay, so yeah, Neil has seen the video. I managed to send it to him. He liked it um, and he gave us permission to take it to music video festivals. So I have submitted it to a few of those. Um, it's screening at the Oxford Film Festival in Oxford, Mississippi um, on this date. I definitely want to make more music videos um, and I have ideas for the Lemon Demon songs. Um, but it depends on a few things. It depends on how these festivals go, it depends on how coronavirus goes, what kind of opportunities arise, so we'll see what 2021 brings. So, I hope that's everything you wanted to know about how this video was made. Um, I've answered all the questions I could find, so I don't think there are, uh, I don't think there are any more. Um, so, I, hopefully, yeah, I, uh, I hope everyone's satisfied. I don't have to, uh, answer any more questions about this, about this video. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that'll be that. Thanks for watching. Cheers.